So you've probably seen this green screen TikTok effect, or you've used Zoom or Teams and used those virtual background effects. If you ever wondered how those worked without green screens, today I'm gonna to try to build my own effect like that using some computer vision techniques and machine learning techniques. In all the techniques that we talk about today, the main thing we're trying to do is create a model of the background so that we can create a mask. If you've ever used any kind of video production software or photo editing software, you've probably used something called masking. What masking lets you do is select part of an image or a frame of video to apply some kind of effect to it. So for our purposes, a mask is just a 2D array that's the same size as our image, and it's made up of zeros and ones. The zeros indicate that we can take out the background, and the ones indicate that that's part of the foreground. Once we do that, we can replace the background with something or apply some effect to only the foreground um, and things like that. The first method we're gonna explore today is called background subtraction with a background plate. Um, this is like our BuzzFeed $10 steak. It's not the best, but it's cheap and it's quick. So anyone that's used that old school Mac OS photo booth app where you could replace the background with, I think they had an aquarium or a roller coaster, and you had to step out of frame, capture an image of the background, and then step back in frame, and you have some kind of green screen effect. This first method is kind of how that worked. So this form of background subtraction uses a background plate that we capture and then compare it to every other frame of video. So what we do is compare each pixel of our current frame to each pixel of the background plate that we captured earlier. And each pixel that's different enough, according to whatever threshold we set, um, we consider to be the foreground, and whatever is not different enough is probably the background. Okay, so now I got the webcam hooked up, um, the software is running, and let's see this in action. So first I'm going to step out of frame and capture that background plate I was talking about. And now the display goes black and you see we've captured a background. And now when I step back into frame, you'll see that it actually pulls me out of the background. Um, and again, this is because this background plate is being compared to the current frame pixel by pixel by pixel. And it sees that these pixels that make up my body in the video are very different from what it saw before and what I captured. And so now we can just go ahead and we can put any kind of image behind us, just like a green screen. And it works okay. It works pretty much as well as the photo booth app did. Um, but the next method we do is gonna work a lot better. Okay, so compared to our last method, this is like the BuzzFeed $1,000 steak. This method does way more than the last one, um, but it costs a lot more in terms of computing and space required, and it's a lot slower. This is an AI neural network deep learning based model. Um, hopefully that's enough buzzwords for you. Now, there's a ton of different stepping stones to get to this point in terms of understanding, but we're doing something here called image segmentation, where we have a neural network and we pass in an image, and the output of that neural network is a label for each pixel. Let's just think of this as a black box. We give our neural network an image and it spits out a bunch of numbers. Now, what those numbers mean are what the neural network thinks each pixel um, is corresponding to. So for example, in our case, we wanna know pixel-wise what is a human and what is a background. For this video, I used a pre-trained UNET model, which was first developed by Olaf Ronenberg, Philip Fischer, and Thomas Brox at the University of Freiburg in Germany. So at the most basic level, the way we train these neural networks, or more specifically this neural network, works like this. So we start off with a bunch of labeled training data. That data looks like the stuff that we want the model to output later on. So at the very beginning, when we show our model just the image, it basically is outputting random numbers. And then as we show up more of images and then the labels afterwards, um, it learns over time what kind of labels should come out of what kind of images. So an analogy I like to make, and I hope I don't make in every video, is when you do a spelling test and in the first grade, you know, you're not great at spelling, but you get a test and you try your best. When you get those marks back from your teacher that says you spelled this word right, this word wrong, this word right, this word wrong, then you look at where you went wrong and how you went wrong. 
you try to improve your spelling next time and you do another test. Your teacher shows you where you went wrong, where you went right. And again, you try to see why you got those wrong and how you can improve for next time. So basically, we just do that hundreds and thousands of times with our input data and our label data. Um, it sounds like magic, but really it's just a huge blob of relatively simple statistics and a lot of computational power. So now that we can detect the human in the image, we're basically back to where we are with the first method. Um, we can make a mask from where the model thinks there's a human and mask out where it thinks that the background is. Okay, so now we're back on the webcam. I can go ahead and activate the effect by pressing a key on my keyboard. And as you can see, this gives us a really, really clean mask. So again, the neural network is detecting which pixels it thinks are the human and which pixels it thinks are the background. And I'm keeping or turning those pixels white, uh, depending on what that, what that prediction is. Um, and so I didn't have to move out of frame. I can actually move the camera this time because I don't have that static background plate that has to match with my background. If you've used Zoomer Teams, uh, this probably looks pretty familiar. Um, and I think this could pass for some of those applications. Uh, it's, it's, it could use some post-processing, like some blur on the mask or something like that. But for a toy application just running on my laptop, this is really clean. If I want to use this for TikTok, I can, um, I can move my phone around, I can react to all my favorite TikToks, and I think it looks really good. So there you go. There's two ways you can build your own virtual background effect using some computer vision and machine learning techniques. So if you liked that video, let me know down below. Um, it was a lot of fun to make, it took a long time to make. Um, if you liked it, leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. I should be coming out with a blog soon uh, that has the code and some written explanations, so look out for that.